Hello everyone and welcome back to Age of Nagash which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma and in this video we're going to be continuing my how to start collecting an army for Age of Sigma and in this particular video we'll be talking about the Stormcast Eternals. So God knows why you want to collect that army, obviously it's probably just probably because you're generally a really boring person and nobody likes you. I have personally never had the ambition if you can even call it that, or the desire to start collecting a Stormcast Eternal Army. That's being Asian Nagash here, I hate Sigma and all things to do with him. Absolute fucking traitor. And then also, I don't understand why you guys voted for Stormcast Eternals on my most popular poll I have ever had on the channel. So this is the first poll I believe that's breached over 900 votes at the moment, currently at 907, and Stormcast have got it because it's 23%, and Carolyn Overlords very sadly behind them at 22. So, anyway, with all this aside, you know me, every time I talk about Stormcast Eternals, I can't not talk about them without letting in a load of hatred, and if you think differently, don't really care, you can stop watching the video, watch someone else's, but I will do the best that I can on trying to give you guys advice on how to start collecting Stormcast Eternals and my biggest advice I can give you is check out my playlist on how to start collecting armies for Age of Sigma and just literally pick any other army and I would probably respect you more for it. Now joking aside, what we're going to do in this video, in case you haven't actually seen one of my how to start collecting videos before and you're still watching this, I mean I'm glad you like the channel. So what we've got is we're going to go over the start collecting boxes for the Stormcast Eternals. We're also going to go into the other ways to collect them which are Soul Wars, the other mini versions of Soul Wars that we went over in the Nighthorn how to start collecting video. And we'll do that again in this video but obviously talk about it more from a Stormcast Eternal perspective. And then, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I won't be doing auto-includes for your Stormcast Eternals, and I won't be doing almost auto-includes for your Stormcast Eternals, because in all honesty, I purely just don't have enough experience really playing with them or playing much against them. I used to play against them a lot back in 1st edition for Age of Sigma before there were any points, and I think that's really where a lot of my hatred of Stormcast comes from, because... I played against them when there was no points and the Star Drake was worth the same as 16 zombies because we did it on a wound camp basis and I still believe Stormcast Eternals are broken and I fully understand that they are not broken anymore at the times of this recording and they are probably not one of the top armies either and probably below some of the armies I play. However, that stayed in my head. So my idea on what auto includes the army or what aren't auto includes... I haven't got the best experience on it and the best knowledge so I don't want to give you guys false information essentially and make you guys go out and buy something because I said it was good and really I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So what I'll be doing in this army will be more for like what is going to be a good way for you to start Stormcast Eternals financially by looking at those big box sets. And just before we get straight into that, I do of course, as always, want to do a massive shout out to my patrons and YouTube members, who because of these people, I can continue to create content for YouTube and try to help you guys get into Age of Sigma and continue your Age of Sigma journey like I've done for the last three odd years. So going on with my Vampire Lord on a Zombie Dragon, and this is going to be my top supporter, and that is going to be Stuart F. So Stuart, thank you so much for supporting that tier, it makes a huge difference on that alone, thank you so much. And then we've got my Morgas, which is going to be Jonathan H, Philco, Bleed Red, and Christopher G. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting on that tier. You've been doing it for quite a long time now, and it hasn't gone unnoticed. I really do appreciate that support. And then my Vampires, which is going to be Mir, Martinus, Roush321, David A, Ronnie H, Doug P, Spare Bear, Christopher H, and Northdrop, and Nathan F. Thank you all for supporting on that tier as well. It's extremely kind of you, and I just want to also give a shout out again to Nathan F, who is a brand new patron. So thank you so much for deciding to support the channel on that way. And honestly, you won't regret your decision. It will go a huge way to keep supporting the channel. And going on to my necromancers, we've got Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Quad, Cranky Womba, Christopher C, Krista F, James S, Robin S, Steve T, James T, Patrick F, and JJ. Thank you all so much for your continued support of the channel. Really couldn't do it without you. If anyone else likes to support in this way, you can click the join button or check out the link to my Patreon at the top of the description down below of this video. But with all that aside, let us crack on with this video. And the first thing we'll be talking about is first buys of the army. So the first thing that's going to come up is going to be the Battle Tome. Now, this is how I usually start these, how to start collecting videos, because generally the Battle Tome, for me anyway, because all this is from my perspective, 
The Battle Tome is what inspires you to collect the army. It's got all the lore in it, so it's got all the story and all the narrative behind the army. It lets you help you customize on how you want to anything from buying the models to building to painting them as well, which is a big thing for me, and even basing them so you can tell like what sort of environment or setting your models are going to be in. Are they going to be in a I don't know, a Icelandic landscape or something, or they're going to be in a barren desert. All these little things you can do by just reading the lore and you can get inspiration from it. And also a lot of battle tomes these days do include painting guys to try and help you on trying to get certain techniques to the army, especially if you're new to it or if you're new to Warhammer or even Age Sigma as a whole. So it's a great source of inspiration and to help you along with the army process. But also it of course contains all the rules for your army and then more than just the rules you can get on the Games Workshop website or just on the um, Age of Sigma app as an example where you get all the War Scrolls. This contains all the allegiance abilities and sub-allegiance abilities for your Stormcast Eternals. So what do I mean by allegiances and sub-allegiances? I have done a whole video on that separately in my How to Play Age of Sigma video so you can go check that out. But essentially an allegiance is Stormcast Eternal. That's your army. So when someone says to you, what army do you play? And you go, Stormcast Eternal. What it really means to say is, what allegiance do you play? And you go, Stormcast Eternal. And then a sub-allegiance, Stormcast have plenty to choose from. They're called Stormhost. And what they mean is it's just like an extra certain flavoring you can give to your Stormcast to say, oh yeah, they're Stormcast, but they come from this certain Stormhost that can add a huge amount of difference. It's like if someone said to you, you and the army, right? But are you an infantry? Are you an armoured? Not direct comparisons here, but you can see why I'm trying to break it down to try and simplify it for anyone who's a bit new watching this video. And then what I would say with the Battle Tome as well, because it gives you that inspiration and then the knowledge of the rules, it is a great guide you can use to choose what models you want to buy for your army. Now, of course, you can say that you can just go into a Games Workshop store or you can go onto the Games Workshop website and just buy whatever models you want and just build and collect whatever models you want. And that is absolutely okay. You know, everyone can do their hobby how they would like to. And if that's what you want to do, thumbs up to you. Fantastic. But I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you know you can already buy and collect the models you want to paint and buy. And you don't really have to care what anyone else on the internet says about that. So the Battle Tome gives you some indication on how you want to build your forces rather than just sort of like shoot in the dark and just buy like a bunch of liberators and secretors and it kind of turns out they do the same sort of thing. And that's something that the Stormcast Eternals massively suffers from, I would say, and like suffers from maybe a bit of a strong word there. And that's because there's just so much choice in the army. And that is because there's been so many releases for Stormcast Eternals. And there hasn't been a release for about three years now. But because there's been so many releases, basically what happened is Stormcast Eternals almost got like a Battle Tome every year. I think they did actually get one every year. And in the new Battle Tome, there was basically a new release of a set of models for them. Like an, a new chamber has opened up, you know, the start with the Brotherhood Chamber, I believe it was called. And then after that, like a year later, there was the... Um, Dracoffs and stuff came out and then there was like the Vanguard chamber and then the Sacrosanct chamber that came out with the second edition of Age of Sigma which are the latest models for the Stormcast Eternal range and basically when each one of these chambers came out they brought new elements to the table but they also brought things like here is another I don't know defensive shield unit here is another shooting unit that kind of does the same thing as what the last ones did but maybe a bit better maybe a bit worse. So that is something that the Stormcast Eternals do. It's not suffer from, but it's just like useful to be able to guide your way through it. And that's another good reason why the Battle Tome can help you there. Generally, the newer stuff is better. And with this talk of all new releases for the Stormcast that's happened over the last, well, since the start of Age of Sigma, because they've got the army that's had the most releases, as their range is absolutely huge, and it was a brand new army when we went into Age of Sigma, they haven't had an update for, like I said, about three years. So this battle tome, you can see on the screen now, may not be around for too much longer. Now, we haven't got anything confirmed from Games Workshop that there's a new Stormcast battle tome coming out, but we know there probably will be one, and there's going to be third edition for Age of Sigma coming out soon. This summer, we have rumours to suggest, and every time there's been a new edition of Age of Sigma, from first edition to second edition to this third one coming out, Stormcast Eternals have always been a part of that, as the Stormcast Eternals have always been 
a huge factor in the law that pivoted. You know, this is Age of Sigma and this is Sigma's army. So it's always going to have a place. And, you know, don't get me wrong, there's like a new third edition box set that comes out and then it turns out the two armies in it, one of them's not Stormcast. Fucking fantastic from my point of view as it makes things a lot more interesting. But we will... I think have the odds of it's probably more likely going to be a Stormcast army in it or we're going to get a Stormcast Battle Tome shortly after. So what I'm trying to say to you guys is the Battle Tome on the screen, if you're really, really desperate to play Stormcast Eternals now and you can find this book for really cheap, maybe get it. But what I'd honestly say, even if you were that desperate, just get your rules online. You can find websites that have got the rules on and stuff. It's not how I like to play. I like to have like my own book in my hands and know that it's it is the exactly the same rules as you men play with. I know check FAQs and stuff that I always like to have my own battle time essentially and don't like to get the rules free online. It's, it's always written by someone else and I feel like you can never really trust it. But honestly, I don't feel like this battle time has got much life left in it and there will be a new one coming out. So if you're watching this video and there's a new battle time out, you know, like basically the front cover of this one has changed and it's the new one. Honestly, the same principles completely apply of what I've been saying for the last 5-10 minutes. Honestly, it's going to be exactly the same in the new Battle Tome. I'd be very surprised if it's different. Battle Tome's always going to be something that Games Workshop says you don't need to buy for your army, but you know, if you want to enjoy the game, you do need to buy them. And the same principles and the same reasons to buy Battle Tome will be the same in the new Battle Tome Stormcast Eternals and get. And maybe even a senior piece at that point. And if they do have a CME piece, probably buy it as well. It's free for your army to take in terms of points, and it's going to massively help you out, presumably. Okay, and then on to the next thing, which is going to be the start collecting boxes for the Stormcast Eternals. Now, which makes things quite interesting is that they actually have two Stormcast start collecting boxes, while a lot of other armies only have one. Cities of Sigma had, you know, like three as an example, but the Stormcast Eternals have got two. Now, what I always say as well, is that Stormcast Eternals have already and they may receive future new like box sets from the Broken Realm series but as I don't believe these Broken Realm boxes will be around forever I don't really want to talk about them too much as I don't really want to waste time on something that people can't really buy um, in the future presumably. What I will say though is these Broken Realm boxes seem to be very much like the Stormcast one from before was like a set of Griffhounds, I think like 20 Adjudicators you can build them as the ones of the crossways, obviously, being judicators. And then you had a Lord variant, hopefully getting the names right. All Stormcast fucking sound the same to me. And with that box set, it looked quite good. But, you know, it's a heavy focus on those shooting units. Well, I don't know if they are the strongest shooting units in the Stormcast Eternal Army. I think most people would tend to go for the long strike crossbows or something like that. But I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, and something I should have probably said at the start of the video when I said I'm not the most knowledgeable on Stormcast Eternals, if you're a Stormcast Eternal player or you have quite a bit of experience with them, either playing as them or playing against them, let me know in the comments down below as it's not just going to help out me for future videos, it'll also help out everyone else watching this video. If I said anything wrong or anything you disagree with, let us know down below as well so we can all learn from it. With Stormcast Eternals, I'm certainly not saying I'm the person who knows everything about them at all, so I'm happy to learn from your experience. So with that, going on to the actual star collecting boxes we have got, and the first one we're going to start with is going to be like the oldest one as well, and that is going to be the Brotherhood star collecting box, I believe it's called. Essentially, it costs you £50 to buy. Again, there's obviously all the currencies around the world, don't have time to go through them all, but in pounds, in Great British pounds, it's going to cost you £50. So, it's going to cost you separately, if you were to buy it, £120. So suddenly you go, what? So I'm saving £70 by buying this box. However, it's not as simple as that because this box is essentially came from the first twin box set for Age or Sigma. When Age of Sigma launched, a box set came out that launched the Stormcast Eternal range in the box set, which were these guys fighting some uh, corner bloodbound you may remember that box set and what they did eventually after they retired this big box set is they then just made a start collecting box of the blades of corn which was bloodbound focused which i believe is still available and then they made a start collecting box for the strong class eternals which are these chaps here so that's why it looks like there's so much good value in this box set when actually you have to look a little bit closer to the detail for example all these models are easy to build, which, you know, if you're particularly new to Age of Sigma, you might go, oh, that's fantastic, it's going to save time building them. Yeah, it is. But what it means is things like the Liberators can't be given twin hammers, twin swords, sword and shield, blah, blah, blah. They have to be given the hammer and shield, and you'll have identical 
uh, one for every two, if that makes sense, because you basically have five different looking liberators and then that times two, which is why some of them look similar, but it's not really too much of a problem. But then we do come across things like, you know, your prosecutors, for example, can't be given the uh, tridents and like the throwing spears and stuff. They have to be given the twin hammers. And then you have things like also just to mention the liberators while we're briefly on that subject. Uh, you can't give them like the grey and hammer or the great sword don't think like that you can obviously customize it and you know model it to give one of them holding it if you want to test your model skills and stuff you can do that but out of the box you can't and then things like with the retributors they have three in this box set and they will have the big great sledgehammer looking style massive fuck off hammers which i think are pretty cool but bear in mind you only get three they take in units of five so you're missing two to take so you're going to need to source two from somewhere else you can't give them the star soul mace so you can't give them the glaive or any of the axes i believe one of the other options is you can't give them anything like that they have to have the hammers and the lord Thurston on his dracoff is um also modeled as he is looking so he can't be changed poses and all that sort of thing he can't be given a different weapon but i do think the hammer he has got is actually to be fair Potentially one of the best, well, I think it's one of the best loadouts for a Lord Sersen on Dracov, and potentially one of the best is what I'd say, but this is from my experience from when I used to fight against Stormcast Eternals a long, long time ago. But breaking down to what all of these units are and talking about how monopose they are, let's actually get into say what we have in the box. So we get two leaders, which is going to be a Lord Sersen on Dracov, and then he could be made into Vander's Hammerhand. So you might go, oh, what do I do to make him Vander's Hammerhand? Nothing, just say he's that. He was Vander's Hammerhand. Essentially, the name character for the Hammers of Sigma, which is one of the Storm Hosts, which I mentioned earlier, which is one of these sub allegiances. He was one of the main characters at the start of Age of Sigma and the Realm Gate War series, where he had a big rivalry with a mighty lord of Korn called Corgus Cole. And yeah, so he's quite a cool character. Um, but Hammers of Sigma, so you know, most boring colour scheme, in my honest opinion. And uh, that is what you get from him. So you also have your Lord Relictor, who is the uh, guy with the skull face mask and the banner with like the skeleton looking guy on it with the sword. He's pretty cool for your army as well. Pretty cheap as well in terms of points. Again, monopose, so you can't change him up. Not really too much of a problem. I can't see where you can buy this guy separately. He's one of the ones that I couldn't find on the Games Workshop website. And then for battle lines, you have one. So that's going to be your 10 liberators. So again, you can take them in units of five, so you can split them into technically two battle line, but how I do things on these Star Collector videos is I just go, if it's just the same war scroll, it counts as one. So you get 10 liberators, and then for your other two units, you get three retributors and three prosecutors. So you do get a lot of stuff in this box set. You know, in terms of points, it's quite high up there. I haven't calculated it, but I can just see by seeing this amount of models. From a star collecting box, there's a decent amount of points you can get from it, especially when we compare it next to the um, other star collecting box, which we will do now. And you can see on your screens as well. And this is the like Vanguard box set, which I had mentioned as well was like a one or two release after the Brotherhood one. And this is a much smaller, but a much more what we compare star collecting boxes to, rather than just like everything chucked in, easy to build stuff. And this box is going to cost you £86.25 separately. But if you were to buy it all in this box, £60. So a nice saving of £26.25 would may not be nearly as much of a saving as the last box. But these are a bunch of models that are newer, even though the old ones weren't really that old. But they presumably are easier to build in different poses. I haven't really got a clue. Never fucking built these models. But what I will say is that you will get yourselves a Lord Aquila. And you will get yourself one battle line unit as well, which is the Vanguard Hunters, and you'll get five of those. And then you'll get one other unit, which is going to be three Vanguard Paladors. So really, what are the Vanguard box all about? Essentially, these guys are really, really fast. You've got your five Vanguard Hunters, which they can be battle line basically. And what they can do is they can set up off the table. And then that means that they can teleport onto a board edge of a table. They've made me waste the life of a Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon to guard a back objective. So five of these bastards come and take my objective and burn it in Scorched Earth, which was from a while ago, but it's made me remember them for sure. They have a little shooting attack, which, you know, it helps. 
and they are less defensive than things like liberators but you know they are more tactical versatility and then you've got your like vanguard paladors which are really really are fast they can do things where instead of normally moving you roll a bunch of dice a bunch of d6s and that's how fast they can move and i believe that's instead of running and charging as well and then you've got the Lord Aquila, who I think he's got a compass and he can make himself in a friendly unit teleport around the battlefield. So this is a very, very fast moving unit. And then the Griffhounds do something like, um, I think if like an enemy unit is set up near them, they can bark and then you can shoot against a deep striking unit. Something like that. However, I think that Griffhounds have to be taking years of six. Might be wrong on that, but I know they are bought in boxes of six and you only get three here. Hence why the price separately is something weird like, 86 pounds and 25 pence um so yeah that is those guys and when you really compare the two boxes it's not really the fairest comparison in my honest opinion because they're both quite different if we're looking at it purely on like what's the best value for points of points definitely go with the brotherhood one which like i said is the first one you can see on your screen to the left because that's just got so much more value in it problem is though is like i said liberators compared to sectors which we'll get to in a moment because they're all the newer storm class stuff um i don't really feel like do much when you sort of compare which one would you rather have in your army liberators are probably cheaper in points that's probably why you would go for them however what i will say to you guys if, if you are not like the most uptight on you must have the most competitive thing your army can do i would tell you guys to get that storm class eternals first start collecting box because you just get so many models like and just so much points worth for your um for the cost really of 50 pounds yeah, you have to deal with things like you can't build the models exactly how you want with weapon options. And yes, your retributors, you have to buy a few more or try to make up the numbers because they come in units of five. But I think that, that is a better starting point for collecting a Stormcast Eternal Army. And then the Vanguard box there, I think, could be a good addition to that start collecting box. As like something you can buy later down the line, of course, when you get your first start collecting box all built and painted. And then the next thing I'm going to have a look at and talk about is going to be the Mortal Realm magazine. Now, the reason why we talked a lot about the start collecting boxes here, if we were to compare this to my review for the How to Start Collecting Nighthaunt video, is because there's quite a few people in the comments who said that in their country, just Mortal Realm magazines just aren't available to them. And I completely understand, uh, you know, there's few countries in the world that have access to the Mortal Realm magazines. And the Mortal Realm magazines I heavily stated in that video are the best way to collect Nighthorn. And I still stand by it. Um, but I think there's just some frustration that, you know, it's not available everywhere. So I don't just want to go, oh, just get the Mortal Realm magazines. Absolutely fine. I want to try and give examples of if you can't get that, because it's just simply it's not available in your country, what are other alternatives? That's why I talked a while about the start collecting boxes. But the Mortal Realm magazines, going into them, they are single-handedly the best way to start a Stormcast Eternal Army. They are a magazine subscription service, in case you haven't heard me talk about it before. And what that means is you pay a certain amount a month and you get four magazines a month. But more importantly, in each one of those magazines, you also get some models to build or you get a brush or some paint or something like that. But usually models. And that means that your magazines that you can buy, like if we were to talk about a really good example, you've got evocators on Dracolines. Now those guys cost £35 separately if you were to buy them from Games Workshop, so you get free for £35. However, in a magazine that's coming out, I think a few days ago, at the time of this recording, which is the 15th of the 4th, 2021, you got two Dracolines for £8. So that is really, really, really good savings at that point. And then that's just like an example of where it gives. Or you can get things like, if we were to look at Nighthorn, it's just an example because I know it. You got, in the first issue, 10 Chainmast Horde. That normally costs you £25 separately. But you got three Secretors. That would cost you, I think, about £8 separately. Something like that. But you got all of that for £3. Really, really good value. And now they're not always as good value as that. And sometimes you might pay like eight pounds for two pots of paint that really would cost you like six pounds to buy separately. But overall, the discount is huge. And I just always say to myself, it's probably about a third off of everything overall. I haven't done the maths on that, but generally feels like it's cheaper than buying from a third party retailer. And um, it's just a nice slow way to build up models. 
I do it, the Stormcast Eternals I get from it, which I know is like, I never contemplated starting the Stormcast Eternal army, and now I'm saying I have a bunch of Stormcast Eternals. I cut them up and use them as conversion potential for my Slaves of Darkness army. So I have an endless supply of a bits box there from that, which is great, and I've got my Nighthorn army I'm building up coming from it as well. And I don't regret doing the Mortal Realms magazine, and you know, best thing as well is you can just cancel if you need to. But if you're not subscribed to Mortal Realm magazine, why is it good? Because you can go onto websites where you can buy the magazine separately, you may find them in your news agents, etc., or shops where you can buy just one-off issues and stuff, and you can go to a place called Forbidden Planet, which is an online website, not sponsored by them at all, not sponsored by anyone, but it's the only one I know of, and you can buy a magazine from them if you would like separately. I've personally never done it because I've got the Mortal Realm subscription anyway, but there's probably other websites you can order from as well, but it's just to give you guys a name. I don't just want to go, oh, I won't name anything because I'm not sponsored by anything. How the fuck is that going to help anyone? So that's the name of a website you can get stuff from. Like I said, there's probably many others. And you can see on the screen now, a sort of bottom left of the screen, you can see like a circle image of exactly what you'll get from the Mortal Realms magazines by the end of it, if you were to subscribe from the start. And you can see it's a sizable collection and it's going to be a huge discount as well. And you get some nice models in there, like I said, some Prime hasn't came out like the Draco lines, some nice heroes. Lots and lots of good stuff. You also get, like I said, a bunch of painting. You get some really cool scenery as well. So the Mortal Realm magazine is definitely 100% the cheapest way to do the army. And the other thing with the Mortal Realm magazine, like a side effect basically, and that is because it's devalued the Nighthorn army, the Stormcast Eternal army, and some scenery to some extent as well. Because the Stormcast Eternal army, now when you buy all these models separately, you might look and you go, like 35 pounds for five retributors top of my head think maybe that's how much they cost and then someone's actually just got three retributors and a bunch of other stuff in a magazine for eight pounds so they're like oh sell these retributors off for tenner you know and then i've already made my money back on the magazine and then that is when the market for the stormcast eternals has been devalued now if you're someone who's already got a big stormcast eternal army and you're thinking about selling that obviously that's not good for you but if you're looking to start the army, which I presume that's why you're watching this video, or just to hear my hatred on Stormcast, I'm happy, whichever one it is, you will see that the devaluation of the Stormcast Eternal Army is solid. Again, if you're in one of these countries where they don't have Mortal Realm magazines, it may be a case of, yes, everything's devalued. However, by the time you buy it off someone selling it cheap in the UK and you live in the USA, as an example, you have to pay for postage and customs and everything else, and then there really isn't any discount. You might as well buy it from your local store. I completely hear you, but I have to talk about the Mortal Realm magazines because, hands down, if it is available to you, the best way to start this army. And I know you may go, oh, they don't actually have all the units I want in the magazines coming up, but don't care. It's so cheap. Just get it. <laughs> like, literally, you'll be missing a trick, especially if you want to get a large collection of this army. So, what happens if you don't have the Mortal Realms magazines available to you? Don't worry, we will be looking at the next things, which, like we did, we did it with the Nighthorn, and that's going to be the Soul Wars and the other mini Soul Wars box sets. So, the first one of these, of course, is going to be Soul Wars, and this, as you expect, is one of those big army boxes that we cover in the Nighthorn video, and what you're going to get is one half being the Stormcast Tunnels, the other half being the Nighthorn. However, I would say the Stormcast Tunnel half is the bigger half of this box set. What are you going to get? You're going to get yourself a Lord Encanter on a Griff Charger, then you're going to get yourself a Knight Encanter on foot. I think the one on Griff Charge is called a Lord. Can't remember. All the names sound the same. And then you're going to get yourself three Evocators on foot, one Celestial Blister. Then you're going to get yourself five Castigators, which are like the anti Nighthorn or Demon Crossbow Stormcast. And then you're going to get yourself ten Secretors. So, to be honest, it's not really a bad box set. Of course, you get all the Nighthorn stuff as well. So, like I said when I did the How to Start Collecting Nighthorn video, if you can find someone who wants the other half of this box, so in this video, if you want the Stormcast half and you can find someone who wants the Nighthorn half, and, you know, both of you, one of your friends is getting into the hobby as well, then that means you can get this box set together, and then happy days, really, is all i got to say to that. But then when we go into... If you were to buy this box set by yourself, obviously that's a lot more different question. It's probably a more common question as well. So the core book you also get from this, you know, the core rules for Age of Sigma, probably going to get replaced sometime soon because we expect a third edition to come out. As I said, this is the second edition box set. So when the third edition game comes out for Age of Sigma, it will probably have a box set similar to this, probably different armies. 
And what you'll probably get in that box set is a different core book because at the end of the day, Games Workshop is a company who wants to make money. One of the biggest ways of making money, yes, it sells models, but also setting new rules in books. And then it will mean that the book you get in this box set, unless you really want to read it for the lore, there's lots of nice lore and maps and stuff on it about the different realms and everything. But if you're purely after it just for the rules, it's going to be made redundant. So this box set, you've got to look at it as a way to start getting into those models rather than go well you get the core rules and you get this and that no really you just want the models that's all you're really going to get out of it it's still going to be like you still make money back in the sense of if you buy this and then sell off the night haunt stuff you won't get a lot of money for the night haunt stuff because like I said it's been devalued but you'll make enough for your purchase of the soul wars box to be worth it is what I would say again it's weird for me because I'm just saying go mortal realms magazine 100% 100% do that but I understand different countries you don't have that option. So the Soul Wars box could be another option for you. You get some good units from it as well. The Night Encounter, for example, like the little wizard there of the staff, doing the starfish pose, looking up in the air. She is a particularly good model that's used in quite a few armies and also like used in outside of Stormcast Eternals in terms of an ally, because she's a pretty good wizard. And is a famous wizard for casting the Celestial Comet or whatever it's called, basically the Stormcast and the spell that's a big meteor. When that hits the ground, it does a lot of damage. It's a very good endless spell, so she can be almost a include into lots of different other armies as well. So it's a good way to get her. I don't know if you can buy her separately. So then going on to the next box set, which is going to be the Tempest of Souls. So essentially what you're going to see is it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. As the Souls box set is nice £5, and then the Tempest of Soul, which is the next one we're going to have a look at, is going to be £50. So what you get in here, you don't have a big core rule book that's going to be made redundant soon, which is good because you don't really want to add that as value. What you're going to get is you're going to get yourself a Knight Encanter, like I said, very useful there. You're going to get yourself those uh, Castigators, which I believe you get three Castigators, and then you're going to get yourself two Evocators, and then you're going to get yourself five secretors so a few less units and also an annoyingly amount of units in terms of models and like you can't make full legal units out of what you get in this box you're going to need to top it up with another box and then you are going to get yourself a blister as well but it is 50 pounds cheaper so especially if you're buying it on your own and you can't get mortal realms magazines and you don't find anything good on the second hand market and all that sort of thing and you can't find anyone to split with the night horn stuff it is a smaller investment to make and you're not feeling like you're buying that core rule book which really isn't going to add into anything unless you want to read the law in it so i'd say it's probably a better purchase then going on to the last one we have is going to be storm strike so this is 25 pounds so half the price of the last one and what are you going to get in for the storm class side you're going to get three secretors and you're going to get three castigators and then they're going to come with a griff hound as well and then you're going to get some night haunt stuff which again like i said is the same with these box sets what would I say about this? I think this is good if you are very new. Like, you're sort of, you you want to commit yourself to Age of Sigma, but you don't want to jump in too quickly and like too deeply, I should say. And um, the good thing about this is that's literally only seven models for your Stormcast army. Are they going to be the best models in your army? And like, when you're still playing Stormcast, you know, like two years later, you're definitely going to be fielding these models. Probably not, but... It's a good starting point. It's not too hard to paint. There's not too many of them. You can, with that amount of Nighthorn, of course you can set it, but you could also just go and like have a bit of fun painting them up as well. Especially if you're thinking, like, I'm not really too sure what I want to do, you know, Stormcast and Nighthorn. Let's just say that the two armies you're arguing about. And then instead of just going a big all in with the Soul Wars and go, ah, oh, I really like Stormcast, and now I have all this Nighthorn that I've built and painted and probably not going to be able to sell well. At least this time, you've only got a few Nighthawk models, or vice versa, you may prefer the Nighthawk. If you do, you know, you're probably a better person in general. So I think this is a good starter one. It just goes a bit above like those little starter boxes you can buy, which have got like three sectors in from Games Workshop, they still do those. And with that, guys, that's how I'm going to end this video. So I know we haven't gone over auto includes and almost auto includes like i said at the start of the video we wouldn't and that's just purely because i don't have enough experience with the stormcast army again fighting it or playing as them obviously not playing as them because of that i just don't feel like i can give you like really 100 percent detailed advice on what you need to include in your army 
what you don't. Like I said at the start of the video as well, one of the biggest advices I can give you is that there's a lot of units in the Stormcast army that do the same thing, but some of them just do it a little bit better. So it's worth analyzing War Scrolls, thinking about your strategies a bit more before you go into it. Like for example, Liberators are cheaper than Secretors, but Secretors are better. Because you can choose if you want them to be offensive or defensive, well, Liberators just have to be defenses. And the Secretors, you can choose that throughout the game, not like how you want to build them. So it's just a one example of how some units look the same, kind of feel the same, like they would do the same job, but some of them just do that same job that bit better. So it's worth reading into it yourselves, guys. But uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I managed to give you some useful information or just guide you a little bit on how to start the Stormcast Eternal Army. In this video, it's mainly about good ways to get into them in terms of what box sets should you go for. Stormcast Eternal is what I can tell you, just don't buy them off the shelf at full price unless it's a certain hero you need that you can't buy separately or something. There's always going to be bundles, there's always going to be discount available, and then the second-hand market is probably always going to be full of them because people are going to go, start a Stormcast Army, worst decision in my entire life, why would I ever do this? Now I'm going to sell it and actually collect a proper army like, I don't know, Osherich Bone Reapers as an example. But with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, and smash the bell notification because the like button helps YouTube know that you enjoy this video and helps recommend it to other people. The subscribe button is how the channel grows. And then the bell notification, make sure that you won't miss a future one of my video. If you are enjoying them, it's a good thing to do. For everyone who's already pressed those buttons, I hugely am appreciative and it really does go a long way to keep the channel going and just let me know that people are enjoying stuff. Annoyingly though, by liking this video, it indicates to me that you guys enjoy, for some reason, my Stormcast content and it's going to make me realise that I have to make more Stormcast content, which is something I really do not want to do. So like this video at your own peril. And uh, with that aside, what I'd like to say is also, if you've got any questions, anything like that, put it in the comments. I'll try and help you best I can. Like I said, Stormcast Eternal Army is not an army that I know loads about, but if I can help you in the comments, I will. Again, anyone who's been watching this video going, Guy, why is he saying this? You want to do that? You want to do that? Put all of that in the comments so that means that we can all learn from it if you are a Stormcast player. Of course. And if you hate Stormcast, feel free to put that in the comments as well. I will enjoy reading it and then um what i was also going to say if you would like to support the channel that's it further please smash that join button which is next to the subscribe button and what that means is it will take you to the age of the gash membership zone where you can give anything from just one pound a month and onwards and it just goes straight back into the channel keeping my channel going and you'll find that there will also be a patreon and a link to my patreon on the top of the description down below you click that link, it will take you straight to my Patreon where you can give anything from just $1 a month. And all this goes straight towards the channel, keeps the channel going, makes me able to keep up the content for Age of Sigma to try and help people get into Age of Sigma and continue your Age of Sigma journey. And if it wasn't for all of these people that I'm going to go through now, I would be unable to do it. So these people decided to support the channel that step further. And if it wasn't for these people, like I always say, I wouldn't be able to do this. Like I've always mentioned that, you know, YouTube, even with YouTube membership and Patreon as well, it doesn't nearly cover the cost of how much time and effort and money and stuff I put into this. But what these people do give me a really nice and really generous reason to be able to keep this up. So huge respect to these people. And if you'd like to become one of them, that would be absolutely amazing. But we're going to start with my Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon, Stuart F, who really did an amazing job by becoming a Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon. Thank you so much for supporting that tier. It really is going to help out the channel. And then my Morgas, which are going to be Jonathan H, Philco, Bleed Red, and Christopher G. Thank you so much for your continued support. It's Morgas. It really does make a huge difference in helping and supporting the channel. Please keep it up best you can. And then my Vampires, which are going to be Mir, Martin S, Roush321, David A, Ronnie H, Doug P, Spare Bear, Christopher H, Northdrop, and Nathan F, who, like I mentioned, Nathan is new, so thank you for joining, and every one of my vampires, thank you so much for supporting on that tier. I know a lot of you have been supporting on that tier for a long time. Like I said about my Morgas, it really goes a huge way, and please keep it up. And of course, my Necromancers, which is going to be Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Quad, Cranky Wombat, Christopher C, Krista F, James S, Robin S, Steve T, James T, Patrick F, and JJ. Thank you all so much. Honestly, when I read out all your names, it 
kind of blows me away of how much support you guys uh, give back to the channel. So always will respect you for that. And thank you so much for your generosity. If anyone would like to become one of these beautiful people, like I said, smash the join button or smash the link to my page on the top of the description down below. But if you can't do any of that, guys, all I ask, if you did enjoy the video, smash the like, subscribe and bell notification. And above anything else, I'm just really glad that you came and checked out this video today. If you'd like to join the conversation down in the Discord, you'll find a link to my Discord in the description of this video and every other video. What I will say as well is we have just gone over 200 members in the Discord, which has blew me away. It's a really buzzing community, so feel free to join it. Share your hobby in painting and any questions you have about the hobby as well. And with that, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much for watching this video. Remember, until next time, to stay safe, stay hygienic, wash your hands, for God's sake, wear a mask. That means by the time you want to, I don't know, for God knows what reason, start a Stormcast Eternal Army, you can maybe play with it at some point in the future to the misfortune of someone who you want to play against because it's just such a boring army. But with that aside, remember, more importantly, that Nagash is all and all is one in the gash.